hey, it's been a minute since we've uploaded, but we're back here today with 10 best online games to play with your friends or best multiplayer games that you can now sit down and play and have a pretty good time with. The games on this list are in no particular order, so number 10 is equally weighed out as number one just because it really comes down to preference for this list. And if you have a good idea for a game that didn't make this list, leave it in the comment section down below in case someone else who is watching this video doesn't find a game on the list they like, they can read the comments and see what you have to think. Also, we didn't put any Battle Royale games on this list because if you're playing with friends and you're the first one to die, not that much fun anymore to just sit around and watch your friends for the next 45 minutes. And we also considered affordability in this because if you are trying to buy a game, you guys might have to buy multiple copies and money can be an issue, so we tried to leave as many $60 games out of here. Okay, okay, let's go. Number 10 goes to Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah, this game's a little bit older, but man does it hold up well. Essentially, if you haven't played a Left 4 Dead game, you're one of four different characters who must fight off different types of zombies and make the way from point A to point B while defending your way and fighting through hordes and hordes of zombies. The cool thing about this game is it's very co-op focused, which means your team is only as good as the players playing and the communication that you guys have together. With different types of zombie classes that can jump and pin down a character, it really comes down to sticking together and working together to all finish at the same time instead of just running off in separate directions. I also love the fact that the Left 4 Dead games take players into really unique places like a mall or a carnival, and it's just a really fun experience overall. We actually did a full review on the Left 4 Dead games if you want to check it out on our channel. There's a card on your screen, and you can pick up this game for about $20 on the Xbox 360 that's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. You can get it used for much cheaper on the PS3, and you can get it on a Steam sale for like next to nothing if you're on PC, which is really nice. Number 9 on this list goes to a free game, which you guys are going to think that I'm crazy for putting it on here, but, but hear me out, okay? Number 9 goes to Roblox. Is this a game made intended for kids? Absolutely. But I'll be honest, my first time playing Roblox was actually with a bunch of my adult friends. We just kind of hopped on to see what it was, and I'm not gonna lie, it was really fun and funny. You might have to do some convincing to your friends, but I think if you have the right group of friends that really like just to laugh out loud and make jokes and whatnot, you can have a really good time playing Roblox. Just honestly, the art direction, it's kind of goofy and and funny and there's a lot of jokes to be made and you can play so many different types of games that you won't really get bored. You could be all of a sudden playing a Call of Duty ripoff like Phantom Forces or a CSGO ripoff and then be a contestant on the TV show Survivor because why not? And then there's platforming sections, there's RPGs, there's just really a lot to do and it's, it's just over the top and it's funny. I mean playing the game by yourself is fun but if you get the right people you can have a hilarious night. Number 8 on this list goes to Sea of Thieves. I wasn't really sure if I was going to include this game on here or not but I think it deserves a spot just because it's a game that I've found to be really, really fun. Yes, at its core there's not a lot to really do other than go look for treasure and sink other people's boats, which surprisingly can be really exciting. But Microsoft is adding more and more content to this game, which I really appreciate. And the fact that you can get on the Xbox Game Pass for just your standard $10 a month, it's actually not a bad deal, especially if you have the right group of people to play with. If you have the right friends, you can play this game for hours and hours a night and not get bored. And and I've definitely been on that boat. I play it with my brother and some of our friends, and we've actually gotten pretty far in the game just doing the same thing over and over again and it doesn't really get stale, it's just kind of fun, there's high intensity action moments and then there's some cool downtime where you're just sailing the ocean. So it's a pretty good game and for its low price and if you need something to play on the Xbox or on the PC because it's cross compatible, uh, it's a great game to pick up. The next one on the list is Rainbow Six Siege, which is a game I've actually wanted to talk about on this channel for a long time and never really had to, the right opportunity to. If you like video game shooters, this game might be the perfect game for you and your friends to play. It is very tactical and a little bit slower than what you would see in like a Battlefield game. If you liked games like Call of Duty Search and Destroy, this might be right up your alley. There is definitely a learning curve because the game is really hard at the beginning, but if you give it some practice, it could be a game that you and your friends, if you guys like tactical games that really involve communication, can really get into. It's definitely my most played video game in the last 
three years since it's come out, it's my go-to game all the time. And since there's different editions of the game, there's a starter edition and a standard edition, it's a little bit cheaper to get into if you're just trying to find something that you might like. A lot of people complain that the starter edition takes too long to unlock the operators. In my opinion, it's not terrible. You get six at the beginning, I believe, and then you have to grind out to unlock the rest of the characters. And it takes about a week per character, but it gives you something to do and you can always just buy the characters outright as a microtransaction if you really feel like doing it. Not the greatest thing in the world, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty fun game for a decent price. Number six on this list goes to a game that a lot of people don't really know about, but it's called We Were Here and its sequel, We Were Here 2. I'm going to lump both of these together. It's a puzzle co-op game that is asymmetrical, which means each person playing has their own room and their own game to go through, and you must communicate with one another to figure out how to solve each other's puzzles. One person has the answers on their side that they have to figure out where and how it relates. And I have um, a... Ooh, what is this? Is it like? turtle? No, no. I have a one that kind of looks like a uh, like the 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 Internet Explorer loading <laughs> sign. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking Not about? Even, I never used Internet Explorer. Like a sand clock. I don't know what to call it. A sand timer. Do you mean like the the dude on the boat? No, no. It's like a the turtle. A glass sand thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? And the other person has to put in inputs to solve the puzzles. We've had a lot of fun playing this game and its sequel. And we even did a full review on it. So if you want to check it out, there is a link on the screen or a card that you can click on to check it out. The games have a great atmosphere and it's really just a lot of fun to kind of figure out what you're supposed to do, and it feels so satisfying when you get something right and you move on to the next chamber. The first game is actually free to play on Steam. It's about three hours long, but it can be longer if you flip and you play it again on the other side with your friend. And the sequel is about seven to nine dollars depending on when it's on sale, and it's about the same length, so try to consider it like buying both of them for seven dollars, but you can play the first game for free, which is cool. Number five goes to A Way Out. I didn't really know what to expect from this game after the whole Game Awards thing. That was, that was cool. This game is a very narrative driven split screen game, whether you're playing it online or locally, the game is still in split screen, that follows two characters as they essentially break out of prison. There's a lot more to the game outside of just the prison part, but it's actually a pretty fun game. Sure, a lot of the characters and the story are ripped straight out of Shawshank Redemption, and a lot of the narrative is really corny and over the top, but it actually serves a really decent story. You get really invested in the characters, and it's kind of funny to poke fun at the game and story every once in a while, too. My fiance and I have been playing it, and it's a great game also if you're not the most experienced gamer or you're playing with someone who's not the most experienced, because it actually is pretty easy, most of the game's quick time events, so it's pretty forgiving in that sense, but even if you're both experienced players, you can have a lot of fun playing through it. The cool thing is also a $30 price tag gives entry to both players, even if the other player's online, there's a free player 2 download that gives them the game, so they'll be able to play the game as long as one person has the game, so for $30, you both get to play a game, it's a pretty fair deal. Number four on this list goes to good old Portal 2, one of my favorite games of all time because of its single player, the co-op in the game is actually really fun, especially on the PC. While the Xbox and the PS3 versions of the game have co-op and it's a pretty long co-op, it's about four to five hours and it's pretty challenging. The PC version is really where it's at because there's community made maps and you can just play forever and never run out of games to play. We've had a lot of fun playing Portal 2 online in the past and it's definitely a must have pickup game. The physics are a little bit weird if you've never played a Portal game before, but if you go ahead and get used to it, it's it's really fun and you really can't tell that the game is already seven years old just playing it. So you'll have a really good time playing this one if you pick it up. Number three on this list goes to any of the Saints Row games specifically Saints Row 2, 3, or 4. Uh, 2 was my favorite, but 3 and 4 are also pretty good, and I think they're on the Xbox One now also, and the PS4. The Saints Row games are just hilarious, and they're over the top, and they're sandbox games. If you play Saints Row 3, 
in Saints Row 2, it's more of like a Grand Theft Auto style that you can play with friends, but the story is so funny and over the top and just ridiculous. And Saints Row 4 takes it even further and pretty much gives you superhero powers. And what's not more fun than that? Besides just the, the funny narrative that goes on and the fact that you can make your character look how ridiculous you want, it's just an overall really good game and it's not a game you're going to get bored with. It's a game that always has you coming back because there's a chuckle or just a weird joke that that will just resonate with you. I strongly recommend the Saints Row games and I hope that they make a new one sometime soon. I know financially the company isn't doing the best, but you know what? It's been a solid franchise. Number two on this list goes to Halo 3 or Halo Reach. I'm gonna go talk about Halo 3 a little bit more just because it's on the Master Chief Collection. It's a little more accessible. It's also backwards compatible, but Halo Reach is too. But these games are so much fun, especially if you're just sitting around with some friends and you want to like single player, PvE game to play. It can be a really fun game. I highly recommend cranking the difficulty up to Legendary 2 and being determined to finish it, get those achievements, because that's where you're going to see the most fun. You're going to see the AI really come to life and really have to use strategy to get through some things. Halo 3 is probably one of the best campaigns in the Halo franchise. Same with Halo Reach. Uh, people are going to argue with me all they want. I don't care. Fight me. Don't at me, though. And um, the, the game is really solid. It's really fun. You have so much to do. Each level is different. And the story is good. Even if you've never played the past Halo games, you can kind of figure out more or less what's going on. If you've never played Halo, Halo Reach might be the easier one to come into. You can play any of the Halos with your friends. But Halo 3 and Halo Reach let you do four players. That's just a game to try out. And I think that if you're looking... For a first person shooter that's more story driven, check out Halo Reach or Halo 3, you'll have a great time. And then number one, I have two games written down. I was supposed to decide, I didn't decide. It's gonna be a tie for, for, for our top 10, but golf with your friends, it's a golf game, a mini game where you golf with your friends and you can even make the ball jump or have different shapes of the ball or Castle Crashers, which is like a side-scrolling fighting action adventure game, which is surprisingly really fun, really funny and really addicting. It's a great RPG game. You can upgrade your characters, have different powers and you work together to fight through stuff. And it's pretty much a really long hack and slash, but it's really charming in its own way. But golf with your friends, you golf, with your friends. It's Putt Putt Golf with your friends. Available only on PC, but it's so much fun. It's so addicting. You can get really good and then make fun of your friends for being really bad, or you can trash talk other golfers. It's just really easy. It's simple controls. It's easy to pick up. It's not too demanding. My MacBook almost could play it without exploding, but then it almost exploded, so I had to stop playing it. But you can run it on pretty much any PC, and it's a pretty affordable game. So uh, check out either of those games. Hey, if you like this video though, that was our list. I should have said that. But be sure to subscribe to Rocket Sloth for more videos like this published every couple of days. Yeah, we've been gone for a month, but hey, we're here now. And you can also become a patron at rocketsloth.net where you can become a patron. I just got charged $20 to renew the, the domain link. We don't even have that many patrons, so... Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But check it out. Show us some support. There's some really cool perks. You can hang out. You can game with us. There's things to do, places to be. I appreciate your faces, guys, and we'll see you guys next time with a brand new video.